Young Woo rushed back into the action after finding no one in the control room behind the stage. Everyone keeps telling Hei that the light was dropped over his head inadvertently, but there is no proof of it. However, it makes him start to worry about Hei and feel obligated to take care of her as team captain. Both Sun Ho and Young Woo want to help Hei get home when she gets very wasted at a team drinks night. All three end up in the backseat of a cab, with Hei slouching from one man's shoulder to the other, until she perks up and begins to perform cheer routines, at which point she slaps the other two men in the face. Sun Ho thinks it humorous, but Young Woo is annoyed, which makes me wonder how she doesn't like Sun Ho even a little. Even though Hei has made it clear who her crush is, the drama is still playing about with the love triangle. When she and Young Woo are paired up in class and asked to discuss their ideal marriage partners, Hei asserts that money is the most crucial component of a marriage, while Young Woo asserts that love is the most crucial component. Later, though, it becomes clear that she had in mind Young Woo, who is a charismatic leader who is genuinely kind once you get to know him. When writing about his ideal partner, Young Woo mentions Hei and how she makes him grin. Sun Ho, meanwhile, beams while performing each action. When Thea takes the team on a field trip, Young Woo does begin to open up a little. Hei sleepily cuddles up to him on the bus journey there even though they are running late to join. He concerns about an arrhythmia since his heart skips a beat. They exit the bus at night, and Young Woo is pointing out stars. When he directs her hand towards a particular star, they momentarily hold hands. I got the impression from these sequences that Young Woo likes Hei, but he feels embarrassed to admit it because he is the squad leader. Just as Young Woo is bandaging up a scrape Hei gets while running for the field trip food, Sun Ho stumbles on them sitting close. Sun Ho's holding an umbrella for the downpour that suddenly starts, hoping for Hei to join him underneath, and we wind up with the trio cramming into Sherrod instead. It's a funny, probably my favorite, but I'm put off by the constant bickering between Young Woo and Hei, which the drama is using to show their feelings for each other. Sun Ho can't take it either and leaves them to argue alone under the umbrella. Mystery puzzle starts to come together during the field trip. Sun Ho notices someone snapping photos from underneath a train while he and Hei are strolling by some train lines after nightfall. He pursues the man, who turns out to be a member of the broadcasting club who is working with Hei on a group project for one of her classes. Sun Ho lets the man go after Hei tells him not to worry because she has the man's phone number. The broadcasting club asks if a member of Thea would pass away this year while uploading his images to a website. The team member Lee Yu Min, who is missing and who we now know was Yung Wu's first crush, has some backstory on the website. Yu Min vanished after a light hit her during a practice two years ago, and it's believed that she passed away. According to the website, there are similarities between then and now. They resemble each other so much that it appears someone is attempting to carry out the prophecy. After reading the website's information, the majority of the team left. Since he has no chance with Hei, Sun Ho also makes the decision to give up and find a new girlfriend. Yu Min then comes completely out of nowhere and refuses to reveal her whereabouts over the last two years. When she returns, Young Woo is so ecstatic that Hei feels overlooked and envious. However, it appears that she has a valid reason to be frightened of Yu Min because it seems as though everything she says has a subliminal threat. It upsets Young Woo and Cho Hee to learn, through the website, that Hei has been receiving threatening texts, and Young Woo becomes even more concerned. Yu Min was trapped in the storage room besides Hei, according to the remaining details of the tale. She was being teased at the time for dating a freshman on the squad. So bullying was blamed for all of the incidents. It was believed that the malfunctioning wire was to blame for the falling light. Later on, though, we find out that Yu Min was also getting SMS telling him to break up with him. This is similar to the texts that Yung Wu is currently receiving asking him to dismiss Hei from the team. In this instance, it appears that they are coming from a current Thea freshman who is aware of Hei's one-month contract to receive compensation for playing on the team. He demands that she either resign or refuse to accept the payment. Otherwise, he will disclose the deal to the public. After much internal debate over her true principles, Hei decides to rip up the contract and remain on the squad. 
Hei disappears from the restroom during a Thea bar night, and Young Wu searches the entire neighborhood for her. She informs him that she misplaced her phone, and Young Wu is so pleased and happy to hear this that he gives her a hug. Eyes wide, Hei considers this to be a highly romantic moment and debates giving him a second hug. The epilogue reveals that Yu Min was the one reading Hei's texts on her phone while stalking her in the dark. I get that Yung Wu is the protagonist, but I don't sense any chemistry. With the final hug, I get the impression that because Yu Min has only recently returned to his life, he is afraid that something similar would happen again and that Hei will vanish as well. Additionally, he is now in charge of the team. He will feel more worse if Hei disappears while he is in charge. The hug appears to have taken place in such setting. However, after leaving the squad, Sun Ho returns and breaks up with his new girlfriend because he thinks it will be more fun to be there with Hei, even though he is aware he has little chance of winning her over. Later, when someone is speaking terrible things about Cho He behind her back, Yong Ayel defends her. He also stands by her when she is threatened by her ex-rugby captain boyfriend, and he films it when she beats the hell out of the ex when he slaps her. Young Ayel is already madly in love with her despite Cho He's warnings to the contrary. On the other hand, Hei's mother and Sun Ho's mother sit outside a convenience shop and drink three quarters of a bottle of whiskey while reminiscing about the past. The two laughing together rather than the usual squabbling and one-upmanship was enjoyable to see, even though I'm still unsure of where the show is going with this. This week, we concentrate on a few key themes and start to clarify the hazy mystery elements we've encountered this far. The realization of Yung Wu's feelings for Hei is one area of concentration. Last week came to a close with an embrace in the middle of the street, which neither of them quite understood. The two leads stare longingly at one other as Hei departs after Sun Ho breaks off their embrace under the guise of assisting her. Yung Wu and Hei are still trying to make sense of their hug after the following exercise. Our heroine, who is usually truthful, asks Yung Wu outright if he likes her. He claims that hugs are commonly used as greetings in different cultures and that you can give them at any moment. He shows by giving her another embrace. This time, their heartbeats are loud, and just as they could be beginning to perspire, the wall-mounted fan passes over them. When Yu Min comes in, the two quickly split apart. It is obvious from Yung Wu's gasping for air that this was no casual hug. The Thea team splits in two, with each side preparing a new routine for an upcoming event. Before the event, they will engage in internal competition, with the winner getting to take the stage at the festival. Hei he can't help but feel envious since Yu Min stays behind to assist with the preparation, which means she and Yung Wu are spending a lot of time together. Hei he is open about her emotions and reminds Yung Wu that team members cannot date one another. Hei he responds, well, rules are made to be broken, in response to him saying that his affections for Yu Min are in the past. I adore how she isn't afraid to tell him and everyone else that she likes him. She claims she can tell Yu Min likes Hei when the two of them are working apart one day. He behaved in the same manner towards Yu Min three years earlier when he was attracted to her, thus it is clear. She does, however, provide a small warning by adding that she frequently wonders what could have happened if she had never dated the cheerleader's freshman back when she was captain. Wouldn't any of the horrible events have occurred? Yung Wu makes the decision to start living his life more after becoming obsessed with the embraces from Hei Yi. This comes after a former Thea member advises the present squad to be wild while they are still young. In a text message, Yung Wu invites Hei Yi to a meeting tomorrow night because he needs to tell her something. It is clear from the date that Yung Wu wanted to confess. However, once they meet face to face, Yung Wu only expresses regret for any misunderstandings over the hug and promises it won't happen again. Hei Yi can't help but cry when he doesn't make a confession, so she runs away before she loses it. We now know that Yung Wu is attempting to defend Hei Yi. He not only heeds Yu Min's advice to consider whether anything negative would have occurred in the absence of dating, but he has also identified the sender of the dreadful texts ordering him to fire Hei Yi from the squad. Last week, fans discovered that the texts were being sent by Kim Min Jae, a different colleague. After putting things together, Yung Wu confronts Min Jae. 
Min Jae claims that he didn't like Hae when he sent the texts, but he no longer has that opinion. As far as we know, he was worried that Hae was merely in the squad for financial gain. We haven't observed any more issues between them since she tore up her contract. At the same time, Young Woo has recently discovered a collection of pictures that someone had displayed in his workplace like an exhibition, indicating that someone is keeping an eye on him and Hae Yi. Min Jae is shown briefly in front of the photographs. But when Young Woo inquiries about the images, he claims to know nothing about them. Separately, we see Min Jae going through his own photos, and in one of them, Yoo Min is pictured wearing a cheerleader costume and embracing Min Jae. When they meet, Min Jae urges Yoon Woo in a coded message to watch out lest it appear that he is favoring anyone. While preparing for a festival one day, Yoo Min and Hae both confess their affection for Yoon Woo. Yoo Min advises Hae not to pursue their romance further. Because of what happened to her, we are aware that she is concerned about dating people from other teams and is probably trying to protect Hae. Later, Hae exudes smugness as she claims that she and Yoo Min are different since she is resilient and there is no need to be concerned. Given that she doesn't really know anything about Yoo Min, this appears arrogant. This week, family is another key topic. We delve into Sun Ho's past and learn more about the dynamics in Hae's family. Even when their mother is there, Hae attempts to act like a parent to her younger brother, Do Jae. When Jae tries to reject her parenting, the two become constantly at odds. Hae assumes responsibility when Jae gets into a fight and ends up at the police station, owing the other person money and jeopardizing his chances of going to college. She hopes to find a way to cover the damages and get the accusations withdrawn so he won't have a criminal record. Additionally, their mother makes an effort to raise funds by often joining Sun Ho's mother, Jean Hee, for daytime drinks. She tries to beg for the money, but she is too intimidated by Jean Hee's response that they are only pretending to be friends in order to avoid the obligations of friendship. Unaware of Hae, Sun Ho meets with Jae Yi and makes a deal. In exchange for information regarding Hae Yi, Sun Ho will use his influential connections to have the charges withdrawn. Sun Ho is curious about how to win her love. He inquiries about Jae's soft point, to which Jae replies that she is vulnerable to those who have wounds. Sun Ho brings coffee and kimbap to Hae's study session in an effort to be closer to her, but he is unable to express any of his hurts. One day during practice, Sun Ho blocks Hae from confessing to Yoon Woo. Why don't you look at me instead of him? Sun Ho tries to act as though he is talking about watching his practice moves as Hae is surprised by how he is approaching her. He's lying, but he just won't admit it. He queries Jae as to whether there is another approach to reach Hae. Jae queries why, given his fame, he still has such a soft spot for his sister. Unfortunately, Sun Ho responds with a terrible response. He has never felt such desperation, thus she attracts him because of how hard she works. Sun Ho doesn't appear to be aware that he is being disrespectful to both Hae and Jae, who is seated directly in front of him. Sun Ho is told by Jae as he leaves that he may be a little bothersome, which may be why Hae doesn't like him. I adore this scene because it's one of a few this week where, despite the ferocious fighting between brother and sister, Jae defends his big sister when someone else disparages her. However, when he makes the same remarks about Hae that he previously defended her from, their mother slaps him in the back of the head. The scenario is complex and entirely plausible. When Sun Ho speaks to Hae, he presents his feelings in a different light. He compliments her on how amazing it is that she doesn't feel bad about being impoverished. He constantly worries that he will let someone down, that he could never accomplish what she does. He tells her that he despises his father. She says that although she occasionally resents her family, it's because she loves them and is trying to be kind. Sun Ho sobs and ponders her inability to like him. Why is it that no one likes him back? In an effort to console him, Hei gives him a hug, and Young Woo happens to be nearby to see it. Additionally, Young Woo observes that the two are seated on the stage in the half-moon position, which superstition claims will mean they end up together.